Right, today's video was a really interesting one. The Rogue, the original Rogue, two years old is it now, against what I think has been one well, of the best performing drivers so far in my hands of 2022. And it's been the Rogue Max product. We're gonna use exactly the same shaft, which is a 10 side blue, 60 gram stiff. Let's just set these two up, hit some shots, and see what, if any, are the differences. Right, so in terms of what we're gonna use for the video, they are both 10 and a half degrees in terms of the loft, and we're gonna set them up as uh, standard and neutral, so no bias whatsoever in terms of the setup. I'm gonna start off with the Rogue, the original Rogue, that is. My issue with this driver when it first came out, if I remember back, and someone can go back and have a look at my original review, I'm overly keen on the colouring, not uh, too keen on that turquoise colour. It was an okay looking driver, but shelf appeal wasn't great. And again, I, what I remember is it kind of had again a more soft feel, which I did like, but I never got major performance out of this at the time. But in terms of a looks perspective, I think Rogue ST has gone on a million miles in terms of where it was two years ago. So for me, shelf appeal wise, this one gets it hands down, but it's all about performance, I suppose. Well, the one thing I've found about the Rogue is that I think maybe in, in essence I might be hitting the ball just a little bit better than I was two years ago, so I'm pleased about that. But the Rogue has performed really, really well. It again does have that slightly softer feel than any of the drivers that are out there um, from the kind of tailor-made, the Cobras, the Titleist drivers. I still think the Rogue had a very sort of soft, muted sound and I like the feel. What I'm seeing so far in terms of performance, it's doing pretty well to be fair. There's not major differences in terms of the ST model. There's a different weighting system. AI technology has been advanced in terms of the face a little bit as well. That's progressed as uh, the technology, as AI technology has. Um, but the big difference for me, what I'm looking for, is that we all know, and there'll be plenty of comments down below, that a head-to-head -head driver test should effectively produce exactly the same results in terms of distance with the same shafting. So first of all, I want to see if that is the case, and it should be. And secondly, if there's any differences in terms of forgiveness. They're the major differences. I'll carry on hitting balls, we'll collect plenty of data with this, and we'll switch over into that new ST model. So in terms of head profiles, they're very, very similar. They're a totally different finish. And again, this new matte finish that they've got in the ST, I think looks superb. But in essence, the shaping of the club is very, very similar. But then the back weighting is a lot more prevalent in the ST, so it becomes a lot less sleek at this back end. If I just spin those round for you, Han, you can perhaps see there, does that work? Yeah. Then you can perhaps see there how the profile has changed quite significantly into the new uh, ST model. Right, so ST modeling, like I said, exactly the same setting, exactly the same shaft. Will we get exactly the same results? And I can say that so far, the row performed really, really well. The well, one thing that is noticeable straight away is that sort of soft feel, softer sound has been enhanced a little bit more into the ST model. It's just that little bit softer. And again, it really depends what you want. We do reviews of the Ping G425 and in here it's like a gunshot going off. And a lot of people comment that they really don't care what a driver sounds like. It's all about what it does downrange. And I understand that, totally get it right. But for me, if I was choosing based on a sound, what I want to hear, then the Rogue ST has got it spot on this year. It's like I said, it's soft enough, but it feels like it's trampolining out there. And visually, it launches the ball incredibly high as well. So I'd be interested to see how, in terms of the data, the averages stack up. But visually, it looks like the, uh, the height, the peak height of the ST seems to be a heck of a lot higher and a lot easier to launch than that of the... Uh, the standard Rogue. It's hard to split the names all the time. Right, so it's time for some feedback from yourselves. This Rogue has now been out in the stores to try, so I wanna know if you've tried it and what you think of it. Or B, the other thing is, where is it on your sort of wish list in terms of the drivers that are out right now? Obviously, all the releases, I think, are pretty much done now for the year. So if you are thinking of changing your driver, now is the time to make your mind up and I want to know what you're thinking, where you're at. Or alternatively, one more comment asking for a lot of you. If you're a current Rogue user of two years ago, are you considering swapping into the Rogue ST? 
a lot of questions. Hopefully we get a lot of feedback in the comments. Right, okay, short and sweet. I always think these head-to-heads are very simple affairs, really. We just want to know, this is, it's indoors, it's data-led, it's not about opinions, it's about what the data tells us. Um, so from a, fee from a feeling perspective, you'd know that it's maybe a little bit softer, better feeling. What I think now in terms of numbers is really interesting and there is clear separation between these two. I'll throw up the two sets of averages. The first numbers I want to start with are not the normal thing, which we're all interested in, is carry distance and perhaps ball speed, peak height and launch angle. 13.9 um, degrees in terms of launch angle with the ST, 13.3 with the uh, with the rogue standard and that 90 feet and 81 feet of peak height that sort of backed up what i saw which is what i like to see in the data the uh the the, the st definitely launched that ball that bit higher and maybe does it a little bit easier and they're the kind of things i look for because i think it's what a lot of average golfers need help and assistance with in terms of getting that ball up and airborne with slower swing speeds particularly with driver in hand but then obviously the interesting thing then is about ball speed and carry distance. Now, we know that in terms of legislation that what should be happening is that ball speeds are the same off every driver head. That's what we're sort of suggesting right out the middle, same swing speed should be identical in terms of uh, carry distance and ball speeds. Well, ball speeds at least anyway. Carry distance will uh, be impacted on in terms of launch angle and spin number and all of the things that go together and that's how you really get custom fit and choose the optimum product for you. What I found really interesting was that we kept all things fairly standard, same loft, same, dry, uh, same shaft, same uh, club head uh, swing speed and we still seen what I would suggest is significant differences. So 145 to 148 ball speed, three mile an hour is significant. It's a big, big leap. The spin number is maybe a couple of hundred revs higher in terms of the uh, Rogue, the older Rogue, and that will have impacted definitely on that carry distance. But 237 and 245, eight yards difference in carry. But the big deal really was, if you look along the full list of shots, is just how far, I was a bit more, I'd say ropey, inconsistent today in terms of the way I was hitting the ball, but the sort of 254, 251 balls, two of them, I'm not really getting anywhere near that distance with any of the rogue shots that I took. So for me, I'm always happy to be, you know, if, if we don't think drivers are different, then I'm happy to go with that drivers aren't any different. But when I see numbers like that, there is a clear difference between these two heads and shaft combinations in my hands. One for me is clearly better than the other. And if I was choosing driver A or driver B, then it seems to me there's fairly obvious gains to be made in one of them. So I'm always a believer in, like I said, there's gains to be made, but maybe it's just about getting driver head shaft combinations that are best suited to you. Right, that's it. Really interesting one for me uh, again. The numbers that came out were quite surprising, but the performance of the Callaway ST is, uh, is so, so impressive and definitely the driver that I think you'll find is in my bag for this year. Anyway, you know I asked for the comments earlier on. Um, give me your feedback. Let me know what you think and let me know what you think about these results. Anyway, as ever, thank you for watching and I will see you all very, very soon.